Hello, guys. How are you doing? We are here again another week with an amazing webinar from Product School. We have a, an amazing speaker tonight, today, uh, depending on your time zone, uh, from TransferWise. Uh, his name is Eric. But before we start with the, uh, with the webinar, I wanted to introduce uh, Product School for, for, for those of you who are not familiar um, with our events or courses, so this way you at least have a little bit more of context. So what we do at Product School is to train aspiring product managers on how to break into product management. For that, we organize these weekly free events where we bring amazing speakers such as Eric to talk about their experience or different topics that we like to discuss every single week. So for that, that's amazing. If you are thinking of breaking into product management, this is a really good resource for you to start uh, learning more. And also, if you want to take it to the next level and, re and you are really decided and committed to breaking into product management, we also offer on-site courses. Um, we have campuses all around the globe, especially in the US, but we also have in London and um, Canada. So please check our campuses uh, around the, the world and see all the courses that we are offering. Right now, we are offering four courses. Um, the main one is about product management. And here we teach the fundamentals of product management and how to build products that people love. And then during the last two weeks of the program, we teach how to get a job as a product manager because it's good to learn how to build good products, but also you need to get trained on how to land your first CM job. So these courses are part-time, so they are compatible with your regular work schedule. And they are amazing because all the instructors are not instructors per se, they are product managers working for the best companies in the world, such as Google, Facebook, Tesla, Snapchat, you name it. Um, so yeah, that's what we do. If you guys are interested in learning more about product management or any of uh, the courses that we are teaching, go to productschool.com and then you'll find more information. So tonight we are super excited to have with us um, Eric. Uh, I've been talking to him uh, this week. Uh, he's been telling me his experience. Uh, and it's a real honor to have him with us uh, today. How are you doing, Eric? Can you hear me well? Yeah, thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here. So thank you very much for the invitation. Amazing, amazing. Thank you for, for, for being here today. So yeah, I'll let you introduce yourself and, and, and I'll let you uh, do your presentation and then we'll have um, 10 minutes for, uh, 10 minutes for uh, Q&A. So this way, if you guys uh, have any questions for Eric, he will be more than happy to answer them. So yes, feel free to type them in the comments and then I will read them at the end of the event. All yours, Eric, good luck. Thank you very much. So I brought some slides with me, so I'm gonna share them with you. Um, so yeah, my name is Eric Eden, and uh, I'm a product manager at Transwise. And I'm gonna share a bit about what I've learned along the way as a product manager at Transwise. Uh, first, quickly about my background. So I started at Transwise back in 2015. I have a background in finance and accounting. Uh, I moved from Finland to, uh, to London to start an internship at Transwise, where I then worked as a, a growth analyst looking at viral growth. And I've been a product manager since 2017. So I have about a year and a half of experience in product. And uh, before I get into my transition into product from being an analyst uh, and what I learned along the way, I'll give you a brief overview of how we think about product at Transwise. And for those who don't know, Transwise was started by these two guys, Pavel and Crystal, back in 2010. Uh, two guys, um, Crystal was in, in London and Pavel was in Estonia, and they had to change money between the two countries. And it was a big hassle. It was really expensive and really slow. And they met up and they got talking and they said, why don't we just swap the money between ourselves? And that's really the core idea of Transwise is people uh, helping each other to save money on international money transfer. And it's now, this is from 2017, we've grown quite a bit since then. And uh, I'll share some of the things that has fueled this growth and how we use product to fuel growth at TransferWise. And at the core of it, uh, if you remember- Hi, that, Eric. Eric, one thing. Uh, so I'm seeing uh, that some people are saying that the audio, the audio is a little low. So if you can speak a little louder, that would be great. I'll, I'll try to speak louder. Okay, thank you very much. Night, night, night better. All right, that's great. So, so at, the, at kind of the core of Transwise product is our product pillars, which is about making money move uh, quickly, easily, uh, at a low cost uh, and conveniently. So it should be cheap, fast, and convenient to send money abroad. 
And uh, we do this by, first of all, being, we strive to be 10 times cheaper than the banks. That's kind of the starting point, And that's why most people decide to use TransWise. But we also want to delight you with sending money really fast, which is why we, for instance, integrated with uh, Bank of England in the UK, which now lets us send money instantly to, to anyone in, in the UK and similar uh, projects happening all around the world. And we want to make it really convenient. So that's why we have our apps, for instance. That's why we recently integrated with Monzo, so you can send money from the Monzo app as well. And we have more uh, of these convenience projects as well. And uh, this has resulted in something quite quite exciting, which is people recommend us to their friends. And the Transwise growth story wouldn't really have been possible if it wasn't for our users being in love with the product and telling their friends about it. And that's how we grow. And that's what we call product-driven growth uh, or viral growth at Transwise. And this has gotten us to this place today where we have 3 million users. We have about 2 billion volume per month. We're growing 100% year over year. And we we're actually making money since 2017. Pretty exciting. Uh, so product really is about growth. And uh, my journey was, uh, so I started at Transwise as, as an intern, um, moved from Finland to London, and thought, I'll give this a shot. Maybe I can make it work. And I spent about two years after the internship as an analyst. I was working on viral growth, analyzing what made customers tell their friends about Transwise, how could we get them to uh, recommend us more, and along the way, I picked up a bunch of skills that turned out to be really useful when you want to be a product manager. Uh, so I listed three here, which I think are really uh, key things. So I think any product manager starting out, anyone aspiring to be a product manager should figure out what is your superpower? What's the thing that you know that can really contribute to your team and, and help your, your users? And the second thing is you should try and talk to as many users as you can. And, and product management is really about representing the user inside the company and being the voice of the customer. And what often happens is you have a big team, everybody's very busy, everybody's, everybody knows they should be talking to their customers, but not everybody has time to. So if you can be the voice of the customer, then you're already taking a great step uh, towards that role as a product manager. And the last thing is you should get into the details. I'll cover that a bit more later as well. So what, what's a superpower? Um, so that can be many things. Um, product managers come from a range of backgrounds. It can be designers or engineers, or analysts, uh, consultants, you name it. But my thing was really, I, I love data. I love analyzing customer behavior. And I lo love understanding how things fit together. And coming into to TransWise, uh, I guess my things I knew from before was a bit of SQL is a very handy tool, Excel, as everybody in finance would know, and a bit of R, which is a great language for automating things and doing analysis. And during my years as an analyst, I really honed in on this ability to understand complex data sets and uh, uncovering insights from it. And this is a, an amazing asset. Even as a product manager, you'll spend a lot of time thinking about uh, data, analyzing your KPIs, understanding customer behavior. And if you already have those skills, you're already one step ahead. The next thing is talking to users. And uh, I got this small anecdote here, which is as an analyst, um, I, I got to talking to some of our customers. And this guy in the middle is called Yere. And he's really my, my favorite customer in all of the world. And he was, he was a big fan of TransWise. He was working for a company called Bonus Bay, and they were paying out um, cashback rewards to people all around the world and using TransWise for this. But poor Yere, he had to spend all of his time just making payments one at a time. And we actually we built a tool for Yere, which I'll talk a bit about more later, that really helped him and his company and many more companies afterwards use TransWise more. And in this picture here, you can see us giving a trophy to them for being our most frequent customer back then having made a couple of thousand payments, which today is really nothing, but then was, was a lot. And my point here is, as a, a person aspiring to be a product manager, uh, if you're already inside a team or inside a company where you're trying to transition into a new role, then being close to the customer 
and talking to lots of customers, getting those insights and bringing those back to the team also puts you ahead and gives you uh, one step further being, being a great product manager. And the last thing is getting into the details. And this is probably the hardest one and the one that, that you maybe you want to skip. And I thought, what, what does getting into the details mean at TransWise, right? So in any product team, there's the code, right? And the more technical you are, the better your chances are of doing a good job. That said, you shouldn't uh, have to get a CS degree or computer science degree to be a, a product manager. It's definitely not necessary. But you shouldn't be afraid of code either. And if you have a hobby project or something to show that you do understand what it means to, to build products and to, to write code, that's a great, great sign. Uh, in a fintech company like Transwise, there's also this regulation. And no matter what company you go and work for, there's always going to be some company-specific complexity that people shy away from. And at Transwise, understanding what regs mean is crucial to building great products. If you don't understand what they say, you're not going to do a good job. And that's also a great way to put yourself ahead and get noticed, is if you're an expert in what's actually the, the rules of the game, you'll be able to make better decisions. Uh, operational process is an interesting one. Maybe not every company has this, but certainly it transwise understanding how, how the sausage is made or how the payment actually gets made in the, in the background, how problems are handled by operations. That will let you uncover product opportunities. And that will let you uncover problems in the product that can easily be fixed, but it takes time and effort. And, an aspiring product manager has a great opportunity there to go and understand what's the problem and then define it and bring it to the, to the product team to fix. And lastly, user needs. Um, understanding the details of what the user need is, is really crucial. And lastly, growth uh, is learning. So this is a slightly Slightly different topic. It's something we've been working on more and more inside TransferWise, which is uh, product-driven growth is really a function of the rate at which you learn. And in, in its essence, every new product idea is an idea for an experiment. And there's this idea about making your product hypothesis explicit. Now, what does that mean? Uh, it means you can use the idea of the experiment to get buy-in from the company for your idea. And then once you test it, you learn something about the customers. And even if you fail at achieving the objective, you'll have learned something valuable about the customer. So at, at Transwise, it looks like this. We go out, we talk to our customers, and uh, I'll give you an example here. So my remit as a product manager at Transwise is our business customers. So for me, talking to customers means going out and understanding what do businesses need from, uh, from their payment provider? What specific problems do they have? And going back to Yera again, it's about understanding how can we make his life better? And once you have talked to the customers, you can form a hypothesis about their problems. And once you have the hypothesis, you can design a test and then you can learn from it. Now I'll show you a bit more detail about this. What does that mean in practice? So we have my, my favorite customer, Yera, and he spends hours every day creating payments. And we thought, can we not speed things up with a simple prototype and, and make life better for him? But of course, just having one customer isn't enough, right? You gotta, gotta have a big impact for a product team to be willing to go out and invest time and effort into it. And we said, if we can get 10 customers to really use it, we think we're onto something. If we can build a small enough test, try it out. Now, we did, we built a, got an intern to build a hacky JavaScript uh, script in the front end to just create payments really quickly. And even at that basic state, uh, the most simple solution, uh, they loved it, right? So they really got the benefit from it, even though we just spent a couple of days building it. And then, you know, it's time to get to work. And this is kind of the transition. So you start out, and blue here is overall growth and orange is the new product growth. And you always start with a small test to see, will this work, will customers use it? And as you can see here, we tried it out a couple of years ago and it started growing. 
And once you start growing, you know it's time to actually build the proper thing. Once you have, have those first 10 customers using it and loving it, you know it's time to build. And eventually you get to a point where, where you realize you have to scale up as well. And that's where we're at today, where we're re-architecting the platform to scale it up to work for a hundred times more growth or a thousand times more. And once you've gotten to a point where you actually have customers, right? So you've, um, you've built something that, that's valuable and now you want to improve on it, then you should really look at the bottom of the funnel. So as a product team, your role is to, to get growth for the company. And a common mistake that product managers make is they start too high up in the funnel. They start thinking about engagement or education or even awareness. And what we've seen happening time and time again is you can move conversion rates at the top of the funnel. You can get more and more customers down through, but at the end, they all churn. Now, why is that? And that's because you're going to get high intent users and you're going to get low intent users coming through your growth funnel. And the high intent users, they're going to convert no matter what. And the low intent ones, they're going to be very hard to convert. So you're always best off looking at your, your happiest customers. What's stopping them from using your product? How can you get them to use you more? And then working your way up from there. And uh, this is what we got to today. So we built uh, this batch payment tool that lets customers process thousands of payments at once. Uh, we started out with a very humble experiment and it's now one third of all business transfers are transwise. So that really shows how you can start from a very small experiment and iteratively by listening to your customers, work your way towards something that's truly scalable and truly usable. And that's what we got to today. Now, this is a, an example of a successful experiment, but you shouldn't shy away from failing either. Sometimes failure is even more valuable. And I always get a bit suspicious when people only have successful experiments. So a failure is equally valuable because that learns, teaches you something interesting about what your users don't want. And that's very valuable information for a product team as well. All right, and uh, kind of to wrap up a bit. So we had this one customer, Yere, who I started talking to two years ago, just before I became a product manager. And he was making payments day in, day out. And he was sweating away by his keyboard using our regular one payment at a time interface. We listened to him, we listened to our customers, and we built something that's better for them. And, and this is him from our, our company conference this summer, uh, speaking about how they have managed to grow their business thanks to Transwise and how they managed to launch in new markets and how excited they are about all the new things we're gonna build for them as well in the future. And Yere is now busy advocating for Transwise to all of his friends. We're getting referrals from them. And thanks to Yere, the product keeps on growing more and more even beyond the company where he works at. Uh, and then the last point, right? So it doesn't stop when you get the job. You always have to keep on learning and the, the best way to learn is always talking to customers. But you should also think about what other books, or what other uh, events can I go to? I think product school is a great example of a place you can go to learn about building great products. And I just wanted to bring out three of my favorite books here. The first one is The Mom Test. So it's all about how to talk to customers without leading them or without having them say what you want them to say. So it's really truly listening to what their problems are. The second one is more uh, quantitative. And it's a great book for anyone who isn't very familiar with statistics and that still want to do experiments and to, to really make sure that they're doing the right experiments. It's called Quantifying the User Experience. And it's, it's one of my favorite books about statistics. It, it lays out how to build a proper test in a really plain language. And the last one is maybe my, my, my absolute favorite one is called Build Better Products. And I would say it's mandatory reading for any aspiring product manager. All right, so here are my takeaways for you. And thank you all very much for listening. So first of all, as an aspiring product manager, figure out what your superpower is and get really good at it. For me, it was analytics, data, 
maybe for you it's design, maybe it's uh, a special insight into the customer needs, maybe it's um, that you're great at writing code and, and helping developers. The second thing is talk to as many users as you can. And I think one of the most impressive uh, product manager interviews I've done was uh, a person that had actually gone out and done user research on our product before coming to the interview really sets them apart in, in the pack is they had truly understood that it's all about the user. The third thing is figure out what's the nitty gritty details that everybody finds a bit too boring to get into and figure out what's in there. For us, it's the regulation, operational process, but whatever your line of business is, maybe you're in a company already and you're looking to transition, figure out what's the hairy details of your product that you could become the expert in. And then once, once you're a product manager, it's about running experiments and learning about your users' needs based on what those experiments tell you. And lastly, continue learning. So once you got the job, don't stop there. Make sure you continue evolving, continue developing as a product manager. And uh, I got two more minutes. Uh, so I have this bonus tweet from Noah Weiss from, uh, he's, uh, I can't remember the company now, but he's, he's excellent. I, I'd recommend anyone to follow him on Twitter. He's got great uh, writing about being a product manager and maybe this is the best one, right? So uh, PMs have diverse backgrounds, murky responsibilities and wildly varied expectations across companies, right? So that's one thing to take away that there's no one way to be a product manager. Everyone does it in their unique way. But nevertheless, he shares some great just commonalities among product managers. So with that, I'm going to flip back to my key takeaways. And uh, I think I'll wrap up there. So thank you all very much for listening. And I'm looking forward to your questions. OK, Eric, that was amazing. Thank you very much. It was very insightful. And I feel very identified with, the, with your favorite customer because um, I'm a big fan of TransferWise. And you guys are a really good example of how to disrupt a whole industry uh so yeah congrats on this presentation on this presentation because it was great so now i'm going to be taking some questions from the audience so if you guys want to ask any question to eric i will uh read them now um the first one is from uh, laura braswell she's asking how did you start the process of reaching out to customers and building relationships with them oh uh, that's a that's a great question and it's almost like the secret sauce, right? You sit there in your, your job and you figure, how do I actually talk to these, these customers? How, how do I get hold of the emails? Or how do I just talk to them? And the, the best first step, right, is if, if you know someone that uses the product, right, go talk to them. But maybe you want to get, get more out of it. And it really depends on what the product is. But in the case of TransferWise, I had the fortune of being an analyst, so I had access to uh, I was working with marketing and with product. So emailing out customers was not a problem. So I wouldn't be afraid to get a hold of some emails of people you think could have good feedback for you and, and send some emails out to them, get on the phone, call them. And what we at Transverse love doing as well is we always work with customer support. So a couple of times a year, everybody goes to our office in Tallinn and we take customer support calls and you learn a ton from that. Nice, nice answer. Okay, the next question comes from RT Patel. Um, she's asking about uh, uh, your integration with Monzo. Um, so what she wants to know is how did you work with them to better understand their users and their needs? And um, give me a second. Yeah, so basically it's how did you work with them in order to understand better their users? So no one understands their users better than they do. So in that case, <laughs> we relied a lot on, on their product teams to understand what the user is expected from it. But of course, whenever you're working with partnerships, it's more tricky, right? But how do you get access to the customers? But we're fortunate in the sense that all the uh, Monster customers using the integration will also become transverse customers. So we do get the opportunity to, to talk to them as well. Yeah, I totally agree. OK, the next question comes from Alexandra Kadikova. Sorry for the pronunciation. Um, so how often do you? Uh, now talk to your customers. What's your uh, favorite approach? Interview, uh, user testing, A-B testing, 
um, yeah, how do you find the customers you want to talk to? That's a really good question. And I'd say there's maybe, it's quite a lot of different channels. So you, we talk to customers all the time and that's one of the reasons I still love the job so much is that I get to speak to all these amazing customers. So let me lay them out for you. Uh, one is uh, I email loads of customers. Whenever I see someone doing something interesting, I'll send them an email and ask, hey, uh, I'd love to speak to you. Can you get on the phone with me? The second thing is uh, customer support. So I'll do customer support calls as well. Go out to our support team and just listen into customers, see what, what problems do they have. And then uh, what else? I had a couple in mind. Uh, we use, um, give a shout out to usetesting.com. It's a great service where they'll actually uh, send users to um, uh, an innovation page and they'll leave feedback uh, along the way and they'll get prompted with questions. So that's a great way to get lots of feedback quickly. And then finally, the trickiest customer to interview is the one you don't have yet. And there I really recommend, if you can, use an agency that can recruit customers with a specific profile for you. So when it comes to business customers, I have a very specific user in mind that I can't just find from the street. So it's got to be 50, more, 50 or more employees, so, so many transfers, et cetera. A agencies are great for those very specific requests. Nice. Um, so the next comment comes from Amin Sma. Uh, he's saying, what do you think about pushing new features to the users? I mean, not always getting their opinions, uh, then making for them. You think they need something, you make it. Um, so uh, we used to be very careful about big bang releases or about dedicating a lot of resource to, to the idea itself. So we really want to focus on getting something small out first. And maybe that's just some slides, a mock-up, and validating it. Uh, so we get lots of feedback before we actually start building anything. And, and once we're ready to build, we always release it as a split test. So we put hot traffic onto the new version, off to the old, and then we make sure that our hypothesis was the new one's going to be better, and then we measure if that was true or not. OK, that sounds great. So the next question, how is your day uh, typically organized? Uh, for example, how much time do you spend on experiments, talking to customers, et cetera? There, there's no day that's alike except for the stand-up. So we start every day with a stand-up at uh, 9.30. And then it really depends on what's needed, right? So uh, the role of the PM really fluctuates depending on what part of the product life cycle you have to be in. So at the beginning, I'm working closely with uh, our design team to come up with prototypes. I work with uh, lots of user research. We have actually now a user research will help me, but also just collecting customer feedback and, and understanding what they need. And then once you get past that phase, you get into implementation. Then it's about working with engineers to come up with a strong plan that's narrowly scoped that will deliver maximum customer value at the shortest possible time. And then once you pass that phase, then it's about the rollout. And then you got to work with marketing or sales. And then you got to iterate on it. So you do the whole thing again. And the quicker you can iterate on the product, the quicker you'll improve it as well. OK. Um, the next question is uh, how um, do you adjust your product to different types of clients, uh, big and small? Do you have any example of a case where a solution was good for a big one, but not for a small one, or vice versa? Oh, yeah, so many of them. And uh, that's really um, part of the remit of my team is making transfers better for, for businesses. So we started out as a very consumer-focused company, and that meant our entire user experience and backend was built around people making a couple of payments. And then we brought in some customers that made tens of thousands of payments. And in the back end, all the processes broke. So we had to quickly fix everything to make it scale. So whenever you introduce a new customer type, it's not just the front end that you got to change, but it's everything's got to kind of level up to, to meet the new needs. Hey, I think we lost your sound there. Sorry, now we're, now we're back. OK, so Paul is asking, at what stage of growth does an early, uh, an early stage startup need a product manager? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. And I joined TransferWise when we were about 200 employees. And uh, we already had a couple of product managers then. But I think you can go quite a while. It depends on what the strength of, of the founder is. If you have, say, if you're a technical founder, you might want to bring one in sooner. 
but if you're more of a product founder, you're probably gonna gonna do most of the product work for yourself for quite a while. But I'm no expert, so it's hard to say. <laughs> that's that's a pretty good question, especially when you start a company. Um, you are the product manager. You are pretty much everything. So it depends on your product. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a it's a hard one. Um, I would say in the moment like you are able to shape a product team, in the moment you have a designer and also an engineer, that's probably the, the moment when you start like shaping the product. Probably if you are the founder, you're going to be the product manager as well. And then in the moment that thing grows a little bit, that's probably the moment where you will need to hire um, a, a product manager. So yeah, um, I have one last question for you, uh, Eric, which is a question that I always uh, ask to all our speakers, which is like, which is your biggest piece of advice for someone that is uh, willing to break into product management. I know that you spoke a lot about this, but if you had to give one tip, uh, yeah, I would like to know it. Oh, it's definitely, that's easy. Just talk to as many users as you can. You can never talk to too many and make sure you, uh, you share the learnings with the rest of the company and with the team. That, that's the, the one thing I would say you have to do. Nice, mate. Totally agree. Okay, Eric, it was amazing having you with us today. Uh, it was very insightful. It was fun. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to be with our community. As you see, we have so many people watching this live, over 100 people now. We had over 200 before. It's, it, this is just amazing. So thank you very much for your time. And guys, before you leave, um, I want to share with you uh, more news. So we have more events coming up. Um, these uh, free events are great for you to learn more about product management. As you see, we bring amazing speakers working for the best companies in the world, such as TransferWise, Facebook, Netflix, you name it. So if you guys want to learn more about um, product management, feel free to join these weekly webinars. We also have um, weekly AMAs, uh, which stands for Ask Me Anything, on our Slack community every Tuesday. And then we have in-person events every week in each of our campuses. So if you want to check the list of campuses that we have, please go to our website, productschool.com, and see what are the locations that are closer to you. And then if you are thinking of taking this to the next level and get a job as a product manager, that's what we've been doing for four years so far. We train people on how to get a job as a product manager. We have four courses for now. Uh, the first one is about product management. The second one is coding for managers. The third one is data analytics for managers. And then we have a fourth one called blockchain for managers. Because that's what we do. We train people on how to become a manager or a product manager in a software company. So if you guys want to see dates, instructors, and more news, uh, please go to productschool.com and you'll see all the information. So yeah, guys, it was great. Uh, one more time, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Eric. It was a big pleasure. I hope you have a good rest of the day. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.